Welcome, everybody. This is Terry Palma and Bev Thompson with Conscious Gatherers. Uh, welcome to tonight's episode. Just as some housekeeping, um, if, if you want to block any background noise or anything, you can hit um, star six. That'll mute you. And then later, if you have questions when we open it up, you can hit star six again, and that will unmute you. That'll keep our call nice and clean. Bev, welcome. How are you doing this evening? I'm doing well. Thank you. A welcome, everybody. It's uh, nice to have you with us tonight. And we have a few things to share with you, as we always do. And we're here to help us all to awaken more within ourselves. And Great. that's uh, share, uh, Terry's and my intent. And um, we came together and we, we had a couple lunches and said, let's do this. So here we are. <laughs> So tonight, Bev and I thought we'd, we'd start the show, and whether we continue on it for the entire episode um, or we move to something else, it's entirely how, the, how everything will flow. But we thought we'd deal with the elephant in the room or in the world at this point, which being the corona, coronavirus. And so, Bev, I believe you uh, uh, asked Source a question and got an answer, so you'll share that with us, and then we'll move from there. Yes, I did. Um, asked it. Finally asked about it, and um, even though I would kind of get snippets here and there, and so about an hour and a half ago, I said, all right, I'm going to write this down. So I did, and I will share with you, and, um, uh, and then Terry, you can jump in anytime you want, um, but I'm going to go ahead and share what I received. So I just, I asked, please comment on the coronavirus, very simple, and here's what I received. First, understand reality. You live in many realities. However, you ask about this virus in the reality or dimension that you currently have your focus on. And within this reality, you have what many are calling a dangerous virus that attacks the bronchial system, much like your flu. Yes, you have made this real. How about that? (laughs) We tell you first, Do not panic because that benefits no one, especially you, each one of you. This lab-created virus will affect some people in a more harsh way, while other people will be immune to the virus. Why is that? While in your physical bodies, each of you have an immune system. Some systems are stronger than others. Many of you have allowed deterioration or or have what you call compromised immune systems. Hmm. And there are many reasons why this is so. It is not a judgment on belief systems, which is spiritual, physical, or mental. Mental, excuse me. It's not a uh, excuse me. Yet these systems affect you. You each have choices to what you want to experience. No one else has made that choice for you. Even children. Uh, how even children have their experiences. However, children do not yet have the capacity to understand how their actions affect themselves. Therefore, the more experienced ones, basically our parents, help guide us through our early life until they have the capacity to make important decisions for themselves. So this is what we know. So then it goes on to say, this virus will eventually fade from your earthly system as each one of you grow in your awareness. You have the means to not take any virus into your physical system unless it is something that will assist you in the understanding of yourselves. Many ones will use an illness to exit this reality. Bless them for their decisions. You know, how many times do we bless somebody that decided to go on? We mourn them, right? And that's okay. We're mourning ourselves. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm adding to this as I, I give you the information. So if you have any concerns regarding this virus, then take the measures that have been outlined by your medical and scientific communities, such as washing your hands frequently. It's been one of the main things that we have been, you know, um, that's been talked about. It makes sense. So if we feel ill, then please take yourself and seek healthcare assistance if it is necessary. Yes, in your physical bodies, these viruses can transfer from one person to the next. Be respectful to others by staying home or in a safe place until all symptoms have disappeared. 
Also, those of you with small children, be respectful to your children by allowing them to recover from the illness in a safe environment, staying out of public places such as schools and stores. Again, the effects of this virus will be relatively short-lived. The more you are in your hearts, the higher your vibrational body that is immune from these illnesses. Most of you are not in that space yet, but know this time is coming. You presently are seeing the, the effects of polarization, and many of you are saying no more. You wish to no longer play that game. It is the end of the great experiment, Terry and I have talked about, and there are many people who are not ready to let go. What is happening is that this is causing people to wake up in their own consciousnesses. Again, there is no judgment. Some people will want to continue to experience the lower, <clears throat> this lower density while being of being, while others saying it's time to move on. That is what this is all about, what many people are calling the Great Awakening. We are seeing or witnessing the breakdown of the old density in our virtual reality that Terry mentioned last week and moving on understanding our true identity as powerful beings. So be aware you have help, and we all have help from beings on this earth and beyond that have the capacity to assist us only with our permission. And we have, um, Terry and I had mentioned, each of us is a part of our higher self or that God within. So this God within is a very powerful part of ourselves and will open us up. That is us. It is assisting you, assisting us. However, on the earth plane, many of you are assisting the all. And can we understand the greatness that we are? And uh, the, they ended, this ended, we are you and you are us. Together we are one and only one. That is it. <laughs> Very good. Well, <laughs> let me add to that. Um, we've actually talked on things that will touch on this in past episodes uh, that can assist right now. Uh, two things come to mind immediately. Number one, we talked about conscious language and that what we think and dwell on comes to manifest because that's how we manifest things in our lives from our inter internal and external thinking. So one way to keep yourself safe and away from all of the, uh, and the second thing, drama that's going on, is not to think about it, go about your lives. Yes, take precautions, take measures, be safe, but remember, don't dwell on it because that which you dwell on will come into your life. So that's number one. Number two, we've talked about drama before. And this is the perfect example of not getting involved in the drama that is going on. It is a drama that, is, that we've created for ourselves, for a learning experience, and to separate people more and more uh, as opposed to bring them together. And in the beginning, if you note, the first thing that that message said tonight was, what is reality? What is real? Um, you know, the thing that's happening here that people are, the drama you're buying into is that you forget who you are. You're all identifying with the avatar that you've chosen to be in this particular reality, virtual reality that we're in. So you're identifying with that avatar. You're not identifying with your true self, your God-created self. And so when you can get in touch with that, let the drama go, let your avatar go. No, it's just an avatar. You can leave it any time and go to self, within yourself, and be safe in that self. And as the message also said, you can uh, eliminate and keep uh, anything from your physical body if you want to. It's all through thought. It's all through belief. It's all through love. So we've talked about those in the past. We've talked about the heart math, centering, focusing. Uh, we talked about the conscious language, called the drama. All those come into play now. Um, the number seven relaxation I taught in one of the episodes all come into play to help you stay out of the drama, stay safe, and find out what source is asking you, what your higher self is telling you to do and be and how to, to kind of move through this thing that we're, we're experiencing now collectively, but we don't need to be involved with it individually. Um, Bev, back to you. <laughs> all right. Thank you. Um, that was great. It, uh, I, I just 
I'm thinking as you're as you're you're talking or feeling, um, and because we do bring things on ourselves, is there are stories that we put out there and 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 and, uh, and our choices within our stories and it's whatever we want to um, experience. Um, if we don't want to experience dramas anymore, that's like we start. I I do watch some of the news personally. However, I don't get stuck in it. Uh, at least I don't feel I do. Maybe, <laughs> you know, I guess that's, yeah, I can hear a little voice be, going behind, uh, I, I can hear a voice saying, eh, not totally. So, um, but that's okay for me. It's like, okay. But I look at, at, at the whole world and people, I'm noticing people are saying, you know, I'm tired of this. And I'm tired of the chaos. I'm tired of the, the polarization. I'm tired of this blah, 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 blah. And that does get them to start looking at themselves differently or start looking at the, the history differently. And history can be his story. We've heard that numerous times, but it's history or his story. And what we're doing is changing our perceptions. And as we change our perception, it's what his history is, was, um, and then our story changes because we're starting to look at the whole thing with a new way of understanding. As we came into this world to experience um, uh, reality in a more dualistic sense, and we're moving out of that. We've talked about that in, in previous episodes. So you know, now we're like, well, okay, um, we're starting to take more of our light within. We're, our bodies are changing because of that. And it's allowing our bodies to go through these changes and not fear them and allow us to be healthy individuals on many levels. Uh, any more uh, that you want to add to that, Terry? Yeah, I'd like to, to tell a kind of a story here about a bee and a beehive and, and how they kind of go around about their business and see how this might be applicable to us and how we teach and use our tools and 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 how, what we do ourselves. So a bee, when the bee goes out from the beehive, they all go out in their in their zigzag and they go all these different directions, looking for a particular flower that they know will give them the the pollen that they want and need. So it might have taken a bee hours in different directions to go. And so let's call this bee 1337. So bee 1337 goes in all these zigzag directions and goes and finally comes upon a rose out in a beautiful garden. So that bee goes directly back, not going zigzag and fun, but he goes directly back, that's where the bee, bee line comes from, back to the hive. He does his fantastic dance, which communicates to everybody in the hive exactly what kind of flower it is, how many bees it's going to take to bring back the necessary stuff that the flower has, and the actual directions to that flower, all in this wonderful dance he does in the hive. And so then all the bees take off, and they go in that direct line right straight to that flower to take care of and, and get what he just communicated. However, the bee, after they've left, he leaves, and he goes back to his exact same zigzag pattern and he gets their way after everybody else. It's amazing what we do and we forget. <laughs> you have the tools to know the beeline, to not worry about this thing that's happening right now and to move beyond it. Or you can choose to be B1337 and go through the zigzag motions and take care of it that way. It's totally up to you. I like when you said B line. Is that where that that saying came from? Yes, it is. How about that? I never thought about that until now. Thank you very much. The uh, talking about the B and doing the dance, etc. And uh, one thing we I think have touched upon, but haven't talked about, is the the field and the field around each of us energetic field because. Our own energetic field can affect other energetic fields. That's your, um, what Honoponopono basically is all about, correct? Yep. Yeah. So, um, and I was, I started thinking about the hundredth monkey effect. <laughs> Talk about bees, I went to monkeys. 
And uh, I forget how the the monkeys, some monkey washed uh, a piece of fruit in the ocean or something in, in the water. Um, do you know how that goes? Yeah, the story is that you have an isolated monkey who, all, you know, here's for, for ages, for ages and ages and ages, the monkeys just crack open their food and they just eat their food. And it happens that one monkey, out of, for some reason, took his food and went down to the, to the water and washed the food off before he opened it up and ate it. Well, that, what happens at that point, that experience is shared um, instantaneously with all the monkeys wherever they are in the world, and they all start washing their food. That's what the hundredth monkey is. It takes a certain amount of monkeys to get to the point where it just happens automatically. So it was called the hundredth monkey. When that hundred monkey does that, they all across the world start washing their food. True story. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's, it's quite remarkable. So with that information, the hundredth monkey effect, the more that we are in that higher vibration and our own light and as each of us you know embody that and more of us embody that then you have what's called the hundredth monkey effect and then it's 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 so into the field that other people feel it and i feel that's going on right now and um you know there are some that don't want to move out of the 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 um the denser reality and and that's okay because they they want to experience it for whatever reason, but I feel this is another way for us of what's going on to really look within ourselves, and that's that feel that's in the field which is us because we are one. Absolutely, absolutely. One phrase that I I, I recalled about the oneness and stuff, I wrote down after my first reading of the Course in Miracles, um, and I wrote this kind of as a mantra to say, it says, um, and, I, and I, I put I am, and then in parentheses I put you are, so if I'm talking to someone else, but I am immortal spirit, innocent and whole and guiltless. All is released and forgiven, which is kind of interesting here because I said all is released and forgiven, and I wrote this well before I knew anything about Ho'oponopono. And Ho'oponopono is all about releasing um, the feelings within to release the experiences without that you don't choose to have anymore. Um, and that you're forgiven when you do that. The whole thing is, is forgiveness and love. And I find that quite interesting that I had those in my mantra. Of course, there's so much similarity between The Course in Miracles and Ho'oponopono uh, as I was, it's uncanny, but obviously, when you find the truth, the truth is in multiple places, and it comes right. to you from multiple angles, and then that, and that's kind of how you recognize truth because it's just not found in one place. Um, it, it's found in many places, and it comes to you at different angles, at different times, and in different situations in your life. But they all are saying the same thing, and when that when you find that happening. You can pretty guess pretty well that for you, for right now, at that moment, that's truth. That's truth, and that's that's your creator speaking to you at that moment. Mm-hmm. Thank you. Welcome. Well, we're almost we're we're kind of to the point. If there are some questions, I think I think we've done with the big elephant in the room. I really don't want to deal with it anymore and put any more energy to it. So. Mm-hmm. Um, if, if you're I, I open it up to uh, questions, if anybody has any questions, if, you, if you've muted yourself, you can hit star six to unmute. And if you don't, then we'll just end the session for today and welcome you back next session. So it's open for question and answer. Anybody, just hit star six and speak up. And we have the dead silence, <laughs> which is perfectly fine. Most of the it people... Is. We find are listening to this um, show on their own at their own time, and I know Bev, you get questions and response back to the emails that you send it out. So, just one final thing here: um, if you ever want to speak with Bev or myself on a private appointment, 
Um, you can call 864-999-3008. That's a 24-hour-7 service. You'll be able to leave your name and number and who you'd like to speak to, and one of us will call you back. Um, Bev, is there anything? Do you want? Do you have an email address that they can join uh, to receive these recordings? I don't know. How, I know you're sending them out, but I don't know if you have a, 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 an email address. You can also call that email address in and ask for Bev. So we'll, I could forward that phone call. Make sure you leave your email address so she can add you to the list. That's one way you can do it uh, for yeah. sure. I'll give out my email address. It's yeah, uh, I have. Yeah. Well, it's, it's, better it's just to call that number and leave okay. your name and, and email, and uh, we'll put you on the list, and then you'll get uh, th these recordings sent out to you as a link where you can uh, listen to them on your own leisure and replay them again. Well, Bev, I think that does it for this session. I want to thank you for your time. Um, listeners, whenever you listen to it, just remember you're in control. Your thought patterns are what creates your, your, your reality. Um, and don't get hooked, hooked and, and hung up on your avatar. It's just something that you, it's a vehicle that you're using so that you have an easier mechanism to learn and play in the virtual reality that we're in at this point. You've never lost your oneness with God. You've never lost his love. And they are, he's always protecting you. And I say he just in vernacular. It's really uh, he, she. It is a non um, uh, sexual uh, energy force. All right, Bev, thank you very much. And until next week, we'll see you again. Signing off. Thank you.